I invited you on to this interview series just because there are a lot of women in their 40s who are on the conception journey, on the motherhood journey, and they just don't hear a lot of stories of women being successful in their 40s. And so I reached out to you um, because you you were successful and obviously, and we'd love to hear more about your story if you don't mind. So if you could give us a brief summary of your baby journey. We'd love that to start with. Okay. So, um, you know, I always thought I wasn't going to have kids. Um, but I recently, you know, within the last four years, I found the right person and, um, you know, I had actually had, um, issues with fibroids and I had surgery, uh, gosh, I think I was 38 years old when I had my fibroid surgery. So after that, I just decided that there were things that I needed to change in my diet and my lifestyle to help progress a possible childbirth. Um, I, um, went and, you know, I did one of those, um, modern fertility kits to see the quality of my eggs and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they were just like, oh yeah, you know, it sounds dire when they give you the information. It's like, yeah, you got this many or the, the follicles aren't great or whatever. So that was very depressing. But um, I just ignored that. Um, and I'm a scientist too. So I was just like, you know what? Um, I feel like there's things that I can do to change, um, you know, my the way that I think, um, the things that I put in my body to help facilitate this process and have a successful birth. So... Um, I started, I cut out a lot of stuff. I used to, you know, drink a lot of coffee and I used to, you know, drink alcohol and, you know, just eat a lot of like refined, you know, sugars and, and whatnot. So I ended up cutting all that out of my diet. So that was the first part. I also felt because I had the fibroids, cutting those things out of my diet would actually just help them from not growing back. That's kind of how I was looking at that. Um, I also... Um, what else did I remove from my diet? Um, yeah, so just like the bad things, carbs, sugars, a lot of sugar I used to love. Love eating sugar. I got rid of that. And then I just started doing I know, the low impact stuff. So um, I, was a, I was a weightlifter for a very long time and I started doing yoga. So more yoga, more exercises that was focusing on the core and not so much creating um, – a lot of like stress on my body. So I wasn't like feeling sore all the time or having to go to the chiropractor to get my back adjusted. Like I just did light things for my body. Um, did a lot of walking. I walked a lot. And then, um, What's a lot. Yeah. Uh, what's a lot. Um, I probably walked every morning, like two miles every morning. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what I did that. And this is during, you know, mind you, this is during the COVID pandemic. So this is like 2020 fresh off 2020. I just was like, okay, I'm gonna make these lifestyle changes. Um, and then, you know, a lot of it was just like prayer visualization, like positive thinking, um, not stressing so much about it because I'll be honest, when I first tried getting pregnant, I was stressing. I was just like, I got to take these vitamins. I got to, you know, go to these appointments. And, you know, ironically, like the first time I found out I was pregnant, me and my partner, I actually didn't know. So I was pregnant twice and I had a miscarriage the first pregnancy mm -hmm. and um, I had no idea. <laughs> so I was just, you know, just eating bad and doing all these things. And, you know, then I found out I was pregnant and then I had the miscarriage like two weeks after I found out. So that is what prompted me to go see Dr. Er or, um, uh, Eric, who is a um, Chinese herbal medicine practitioner slash uh, chiropractor, not chiropractor, I'm sorry, acupuncturist. So um, I went to him and received help with that. And then I just kept going. So I made it a point every week to go see him and have some type of acupuncture performed on me, whether if it was, you know, to release my stress levels or to facilitate the um, fertility, my fertility. I did that uh, for about six months and continued to do the things that I needed to do for my body. Um, but the one thing I was doing in that process was stressing. You know, every time we'd have sex during my window, it's like, okay, like this is it. Um, finally, one day, I'll never forget it. Um, 
I just was like, I'm over it. I'm over the test, you know, testing my, uh, you know, my fertility, trying to figure out my ovulation. I just threw everything in the trash. <laughs> and I was like, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. If it's not, it's going to, it's not going to happen. And then I found out I was pregnant a month later. <laughs> <laughs> so now you I have throw to those up. things. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm yourself serious. a bunch of money too. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm serious. I feel like that was the major factor. My diet changes and just letting the universe do its work. Yeah, yeah that's wonderful. How long were you stressing? Like you talk about being just really obsessed about it. Like how before you just let it go? Well, when I first found out I was pregnant. Um, and we had the miscarriage. First off, I thought I couldn't get pregnant because of the surgeries that I've had. And I, in my childhood, I had very bad cramps. So I started my period at 11 and from 11 into my forties, I've always had these terrible cramps. So I always kind of thought like, this isn't going to happen for me. Right. And I was okay with that. My partner was okay with it. But then when we got pregnant, you know, by surprise, um, that's when I was like, oh my gosh, I can get pregnant. So I had the miscarriage and I was, you know, I went through my phases of depression and stuff. And that's when I started fixating on getting pregnant again. And that was not positive. That was very, very terrible. <laughs> um, so yeah, that started right after my um, miscarriage and continued for about six months. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually not that long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not that long. And so what was it that just made you decide to say, screw it, I'm just going to let it all go and just trust in the universe? I think when you come from a place of fear and worry, hmm. it blocks manifestation. Absolutely. So I was coming from a place of, you know, I got pregnant once. And what if it's not going to happen again? And you know, my partner's two years younger than me. And I'm like, well, what if he leaves? And he was just like, I'm not even going to do that because kids aren't, if we have them, we have them, but it's not everything like, you know, and I, I just, I just fixated it on it. And I come to the, I came to the terms that one, I couldn't keep living my life like that every ovulation because it was just stressful. Yeah. Um, and two, I just needed to focus on getting my body healthy, however long that may take, um, you know, and I just kind of, I just remember, I'll never forget, uh, I just, we were in wine country in Northern California, and I was like, I just give this all up to you, God, <laughs> like, <laughs> if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, and, and if it's not, I'm okay with it, and I think that's when you're, come to terms with, like, you know, whatever happens, happens, and I'm okay with the result. I think that's when everything changed for me anyways. Yeah, absolutely. So you worked with Eric Hollander, uh, yeah. an acupuncturist in San Diego, California, for six months. I did. And then uh, during that six months, you threw away <laughs> the ovulation predictor kits. <laughs> yes. And this was at the tail end after you had been working on your health. Um, improving your diet, getting rid of some of your vices, like the yes. sugar, uh, the drinking, really increasing the movement of your body, getting your blood circulating with a lot of walking. How long did you do the walking for? I started the walking way before um, I found out about my um, miscarriage. So I think I started walking in 2019, a little bit after my fibroid surgery, because I was confined to only doing certain movements and walking uh, like the safest thing for me to do. Got it. Got it. So, yeah, so you really focused on yourself, on just being as healthy as you possibly could. And like it's a beautiful baby as a result. And how old were you when you got pregnant with her? She's ready for a nap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> She's running um, a big yawn. Yeah, I was 40. I'm 41 uh -huh. now. So uh, wonderful. So are you going to have any more? <laughs> yeah, we would like to have some more. So, um, and you know, again, like going to the doctor and they're just like, well, if you're going to have another one, you better have one soon. You know what I mean? Like just hearing that those things from people oh, have another one quickly. And it's just like, you know what? I'm just going to trust my body, trust the universe and do the things that I did previously, you know, to, to hopefully, you know, see if something 
you know, we can have a second one, but I'm just not going to fixate on it. I yeah. want to do that to myself because it's mentally draining. It's yeah. emotionally draining and it's physically draining. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, just a huge congratulations to you and your beautiful daughter. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> are there any last words that you want to share uh, with women who are also in a similar situation? I would just say be positive and treat your body like a temple. Like give your body everything that it needs, both you know, physically and spiritually, you need both those things to, you know, help the process of trying to conceive, um, dedicate yourself to removing vices from your body, you know, from yourself, you know, your body. Um, I think that's the biggest thing, just letting go of certain things and sacrificing those things to have your final outcome that you want. So I agree a hundred (laughs) percent. Thank you so much, Monica. So it's such a pleasure meeting the two of you. 